Lord Jesus, crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, by your Holy Spirit, open our hearts that we may understand your word and receive it into our lives for your glory. And in your name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read a poem by Malcolm Geit, G-U-I-T-E, I think that's how you pronounce his name, simply called Ascension. We saw his light break through the cloud of glory whilst we were rooted still in time and place. As earth became a part of heaven's story and heaven opened to his human face. We saw him go and yet we were not parted. He took us with him to the heart of things, the heart that broke for all the brokenhearted, is whole and heaven-centered now, and sings, sings in the strength, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> sings in the strength that rises out of weakness, sings through the clouds that veil him from our sight, whilst we ourselves become his clouds of witness, and sing the waning darkness into light. His light in us and ours in him concealed, which all creation waits to see revealed. I think that's just a wonderful poem, and I think it touches us and helps us to reflect on this amazing event, which we call the Ascension. Uh, I'm a great fan of uh, Formula One. I really enjoy watching uh, those cars race around the track. Tim finds it utterly boring, but um, I really enjoy it. And uh, when I was quite a young child, I would be very excited seeing in the TV schedules racing. And I turned on the TV and was deeply disappointed to see horses racing around rather than cars. So I quickly, uh, quickly turned off the telly. I'm sure you know that uh, Formula One world is mourning the loss of one of its greats. Uh, Nicky Lauda recently died just at the age of just 70 years old. I'm sure you know the story, how he was twice world champion, but before that he was involved in a horrific accident at the Nürburgring in 73 or 74, I think it was. His car caught fire, he suffered severe burns, but more importantly he suffered severe damage to his lungs, which of course led to his early death. And he was such a determined fighter. 40 days after the accident, there's a number to conjure with, 40 days, he was back behind the wheel uh, racing once again. And last Sunday, as you may already know, the Monaco Grand Prix took place and there was a lot about Nicky Lauda and his memory um, expressed throughout that programme. And they spoke about Nicky Lauda looking down from above. And it's interesting, isn't it, that even in our very secular, increasingly godless world, people still use those kinds of terms, those expressions, that language because it seems to me that there's something innately spiritual about us as human beings. We are built to reach out beyond ourselves. It's not simply wishful thinking in the face of loss or death or tragedy. But if we do believe that, that there is a God who created us, it's hardly surprising that within every single human being there is that desire to reach out to the Creator. The Ascension is, in one sense, the final act of the story of the person of Jesus. It's only logical that he had to go back into heaven. He came down from heaven. We celebrate that, obviously, each Christmas time. We remember his life. We celebrate particularly his death and resurrection. And then he returns to heaven, having completed the task of redeeming the entire world. Nothing less than the complete restoration of a broken humanity was the goal that the Father set his only Son. And on the cross, he cried out, it is finished, or even better, it is accomplished. And he takes himself, or is taken, to the Father's right hand, a perfect human being, a perfect man representing each one of us. 
And as this poem so rightly says, there is something about our lives being caught up with his. Paul says, you have already been raised with Christ. Our life is now hid with God in Christ. So the ascension is not just about him. The ascension is also about you and about me, about our responding to this love and in responding with an unconditional yes to the offer of forgiveness and grace and mercy, we are caught up, we are raised with Christ to the right hand of the Father. Just let that sink in for a moment or two. So we are already experiencing the new life that Jesus has won for us through his own death on the cross. And Jesus had to go back to heaven for the spirit to be given. We are now sort of pausing, as it were, until a week on Sunday when we receive that breath, that wind, that fire from heaven that inspires and ignites and encourages and anoints the church, you and me, with power from on high. That promise that Jesus gave to his followers is for us too. Stay, wait expectantly, he is coming. And in these nine days between tonight and Pentecost, we are called to pray, thy kingdom come. I hope that we'll all take with us a piece of paper with the times that this church will be open specifically for prayer and that you'll try and come and join with whoever is here as we gather to pray, to pray particularly for God's kingdom to touch individual hearts, but God's kingdom also to change this world and make it new. All creation waits to see the revelation of Christ. And that revelation will be seen first and foremost in the lives of those who follow him, who love him, who know him, who seek to reveal him as the body of Christ here in Park Hill and throughout the world. That's the vision that God has given to us. That's the call he's placed upon us. And it's an extraordinary thing when we think about that parting, when we say farewell to each other, when we say goodbye, if we know that we're not going to see the person we're saying farewell to possibly ever again, it's hard to rejoice. But the disciples were not sorrowful. They were not in the depths of grief. As this poem says, we saw him go and yet we were not parted. They worshipped him, they rejoiced greatly because they knew that the ascension was also an event that they could look forward to, partaking already in the spirit and one day our physical bodies will be resurrected and clothed with immortality. So may we rejoice on this special and holy night and all through these days, may the Spirit come afresh upon us all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.